Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. So I was watching a Perch video. <laughs> That's how, this is how all my videos start these days. And um, there's these little <coughs> threads in a lot of his recent videos that are very, very encouraging. The thing about them is that even though I get very excited about them, they're not huge news. You know, huge news is usually someone got fired or something, you know, was canceled. But like people just kind of trying to be more professional and ignore people who are causing problems slowly over time, you don't really notice it when they start doing it. And maybe they didn't even realize when they started doing it. But we're watching this massive boat, you know, turn around, steer away from the iceberg for the first time in uh, five years. Things have been bad for the last five years. Sales going down, and no, it's not because of COVID. It's been five years of sales going down. 90 5% of the time, when I say comic books, I'm talking about the American direct market. That's sales to comic book stores, and then they sell to customers, hopefully. Uh, although we are finding that at many stores, the new comics are actually the least popular items at comic book stores. But there is a change in strategy and behavior, and it's showing positive effects. But again, just like turning you know a giant ship around in the ocean, it takes time, it's slow, and it needs you to keep steering in that direction. You can't steer for a while away from the iceberg and then just resume pointing towards it. A couple things are happening. Number one, the people who created the blacklist are finding themselves on the second blacklist, which is just chef's kiss. So now there's a second blacklist, which is the people who created the first one. And then the people who created the first blacklist, they would create block lists and share them with people. Um, and you can install it, you know, on Twitter and different things where it's like you don't see all these uh, terrible people. Now there's a second one, <laughs> which is the people. So the, the people who created the first blacklist and block list are now on the second blacklist and block list. I just love that. But it really is an important thing to stop listening to these people because people are, you know, social animals. And there's a way where you say, well, I keep seeing this being said. It must be true. No, it's just 12 mentally ill people who spend all day on Twitter. You block them and you don't hear them. And all of a sudden your brain goes wait, none of that was true. It was just 12 assholes just spamming the same bullshit for like four years. You're like, oh, I can think more clearly now. So ignoring is great. It, it, it works almost all the time. Um, and so Perch pointed out that the new thing with success is just to ignore the haters. Uh, Boom has all this incredible success with Berserker. And there's all these, it's the usual suspects going after them because I guess Kickstarters for trash anthologies and not successful books that people want. I don't know. They just ignore them and they're doing quite good. Berserker is turning out to be a huge hit, which is, it's not very good. It's extremely mediocre, but people are excited about that. And who am I to argue with that? People legitimately like that. Maybe it's because even though it's kind of very cliche, it's solid action hero storytelling, which is, you know, classically what American superhero comics, what American comic books are about. So it is a return to form, even though I find it pretty blasé. Uh, the, but the main thing is to go in the direction of success, ignore the haters and focus, you know, focus on that. Your job is to sell books. Your job is to make money. You need to pay your bills. And if you get rich in the process, good for you. Uh, the NFT thing was controversial because SJWs are a hate group, an actual hate group. They are obsessed with hating people. When you remove Trump from the mix, they say, uh, uh, Elon Musk, why do you hate? He's real life Tony Stark creating green vehicles. Why do you hate him? Uh, he told a joke. Okay, okay, he told a joke. You guys have been banging the drum about green energy for freaking decades. This guy is the leading <laughs> freaking person in that industry. They, they just need someone to hate every single day. They got to hate something. So now they hate NFTs and the things they say about it are so insane. And they have intimidated some people. It looks like Rob Liefeld uh, got scared out of using it. It's these ridiculous extrapolations that the life 
you know, lifetime energy usage of an NFT is the equivalent of large cities to small countries. And the other thing about this energy usage, are we implying that these servers that the, you know, the blockchain is updated on only exist for NFTs? I'm pretty sure these servers are on 24 hours a day, whether they are being used or not. Uh, so I find all of these uh, energy estimates to be ridiculous. And the funny thing is to watch these people lecture people and then say, I don't have to educate you. It's like, you're not educating me. You're, you're spreading disinformation <laughs> because of you, you obsessively need to hate things. We are seeing success. We are seeing people ignore people trying to talk you out of making money, trying to talk you out of selling to willing customers. Berserker is lame as hell to be, but people like it. So essentially, there are two industries. There is one industry that wants to make money. There's another industry that wants it to be 2017 forever. So really, there's just one industry because one is an industry and one is a clubhouse. One industry is where people make money, employ people, create profit, which creates more jobs, more opportunities, more books to sell. And another one is, um... This person was in a live stream with a CGR, so they're trash. No, that's not an industry. That's a clubhouse. That's a table in a middle school lunchroom. There aren't two industries. There's one. And what we're finding out is basically uh, blood is being cut off uh, to the SJW limb. I was watching... <laughs> you ever, like watch a YouTube channel and you have no idea how you started watching it. I'm watching this one YouTube channel and this woman is, I don't even know what she is. She just, I guess it's a vlog. Um, like she travels, but it's not a travel vlog. She talks about work, but it's not like it's, I guess it's just like, this is like my crazy life. <laughs> and she has a Raynaud syndrome, which means like the blood just intermittently just gets cut off to extremities. So she has this one finger that's like, it looks like a dead tooth. And she's like, it's not like this all the time, but it's like this frequently. And that's kind of how the, the, the SJW portion of the uh, comic book industry. We're not going to make a huge deal about it. The blood's just going to be cut off or it's going to be drastically reduced. And you can get with the program. You can start selling books to paying customers. You can stop, uh, you know, encouraging this stupid gatekeeping, this constant middle school environment. Uh, you can actually be part of an industry or you can just wither and die which is, you've been doing for five years and tends to be that looks to be your trajectory but it looks like a smaller but much more professional part of the industry is steering away from the iceberg uh so uh let me know what you think about this video and i might even review some new comics this week thanks for watching bye